What would you do with billions of dollars? Most people would retire and live in luxury, but Emilio de Angelis wasn't like most people. This billionaire was hell-bent on leaving a legacy in the Formula One world. Even die-hard Formula One fans might not recognize his name, but whether you know him or not, it's undeniable that he had a huge impact on the entire sport. So stay tuned to find out how he changed the face of Formula One. First, who was Elio de Angelis? Angelis. Elio De Angelis was an Italian racing driver with a promising future. As the heir to a billion dollar fortune, De Angelis was trained in piano, tennis, and skiing, but none of that interested him. Instead, he took up his father's interest in racing. At just 14 years old, he was already racing in professional karting competitions, eventually coming runner-up in the world championships before becoming a world champion and Italian Formula 3 champion. This put him on the fast track to Formula 1. There have only been two two Italian Formula One champions, and DeAngelis was committed to becoming the third. His story is similar to Nicky Lada's. DeAngelis was born into a wealthy family, but was determined to make it on his own in the dangerous racing world rather than settle for his comfortable life. Coming into the sport, he most respected drivers like Nicky Lauda and Kiki Rosberg, and it wouldn't be long before he was racing side by side with them. One of his former team managers remembers De Angelis as an educated, sensitive, very intelligent boy. And his racing was so good that he was pursued by Enzo Ferrari to join the Prancing Horses and replace Nicky Lauda in 1977. In the end, though, Ferrari decided on Giles Villeneuve instead. He became known as the Black Prince prince for his wealthy background. But Elio was set to make a bigger mark on the sport than he ever imagined. At the 1982 South African Grand Prix, when drivers locked themselves inside a hotel to protest against the FIA, De Angelis entertained his colleagues by playing the piano. After all, he was a concert-trained piano player. Could you imagine Lewis Hamilton or Max Verstappen jumping on the keys to keeping the grid entertained? In the 1983 interview, De Angelis floated the idea of becoming professional musician after his racing career, but he would never get the chance. He was clear that there was more to life than racing, which is what made his fate so tragic. So what happened when he broke through to Formula One? Unfortunately for De Angelis in the 1980s, Formula One was a sport stacked full of legends. He was partnered with Ayrton Senna and Nigel Mansell, who were two of the best drivers in history. Still, De Angelis managed two Grand Prix wins, nine podiums, and more than 120 points by the end of his career. The Italian never tasted a world championship, but many consider him one of the lost talents over the years, who never truly had a chance to show what he was made of. A year after his Formula One debut, he was partnered with world champion Mario Andretti at Lotus, and he was getting better and better as the years went by. His team manager at Lotus described his driving as having a beautiful style and technique, and that DeAngelis was a pleasure to work with. And his first Grand Prix win was one to remember. In in 1982, he took his opportunity at the Australian Grand Prix at the Osterreich Ring to mark his name into the list of that season's race winners. Among Kiki Rosberg, Elaine Prost, and Nicky Lauda, Robham and Renault, who were the front runners, had all been taken out of the race, and Ilya defended against Rosberg, finishing just 0.05 seconds ahead and securing Lotus's first win in four years. That drive alone has earned Angelus a spot in the list of the top 10 greatest Lotus drivers of all time. Three years later at the 1985 San Marino Grand Prix, he once again made the most of his chances when many of his competitors ran out of fuel. De Angelis had just enough in the tank to post his second victory, but ironically, it was fuel that ended his career the following season. Next, how did Elio die? De Angelis was in the process of building his experience and results when his career came to a shocking end in 1986 at the Paul Ricard circuit in France. While testing the Brabham BT-55, his rear wing failed. There's no footage of the crash, but from eyewitness accounts, the failure sent his car flipping several times before rolling over the barriers. With De Angelis inside, fuel was leaking out of the car quickly, but despite the horrific-looking incident, De Angelis was barely injured inside.
outside. A number of drivers and marshals were already at the scene to help, but Angelus's car was smoking and no one knew what to do. Soon there was a fire growing somewhere inside the car, and the biggest problem was that DeAngelis was trapped. The car was upside down and marshals couldn't manage to flip it back over. When the car was finally turned right side up, it was too late. DeAngelis was sitting still in the cockpit motionless. The lack of medical staff on the scene would horrify modern fans of F1. But back then, it was the norm. DeAngelis did survive the crash and was taken to hospital via helicopter, but he died the following day. The cause of death was asphyxiation. Even though his burns were relatively minor, he had inhaled too much smoke. His fellow drivers watched on in horror. The most shocking part was that Ilio clearly would have survived if the marshals had done a better job. Coming up, how did the Formula One community react to DeAngelis' death and what is his lasting impact on the sport? So don't go anywhere. What happened after his death? In the 1980s, death was simply a part of Formula One. On average, at least one driver would be killed each season. Even with the knowledge DeAngelis' death sent shockwaves through the paddock, he was one of the most well-liked drivers on the grid. It was no secret that DeAngelis came from a wealthy family, but earned respect as a lightning-fast driver. But veteran Formula One journalist Nigel Roebuck thinks the only thing holding DeAngelis back from further success was his reluctance to work hard. DeAngelis Angelus was even opposed to testing session. He once said, what difference would it make if we didn't do it? There are two days of practice before the race, and that should be enough. If it weren't for his charming and likable personality, he might have been called a little lazy. And his popularity on the grid meant that there was no shortage of people ready to jump out and help him when he crashed at Paul Ricard. 1980 world champion Alan Jones was the first to stop and was appalled by the lack of action from the marshals. More than anyone, though, to Angelus' close friend Kiki Rose Rosberg took the loss the hardest. That was when he decided to retire at the end of the season. He had won a world championship four years earlier and had nothing else to prove. Rosberg returned to racing for sports car and endurance events, but never to Formula One. So how did Elio's death change the sport? The tragedy of Elio De Angelis' story is that his death was easily avoidable. If the fire was extinguished quicker and there were more safety standards, Elio might have gone on to win a world championship. Like his teammate, Nigel Mansell did. Even though he never won a title, DeAngelis' legacy lives on in the sport, not just in the way you might think. After his death in 1986, Formula One was forced to reflect. Staff members and drivers were shocked by the way DeAngelis died, such an avoidable death. That's why, from then on, there were a number of new safety measures introduced. First of all, a helicopter and firefighters would be on hand at every race, and each section would be fitted with enough equipment to put out a fire quickly. The upgraded safety led to the longest period without deaths up until then. There's no doubt that DeAngelis' death was the turning point. The Italian once said, no matter how much money you have, when you get in the car, you're on your own. But thanks to new safety standards, drivers had a little more support. The next landmark incident was Ayrton Senna and Roland Ratzenberger's deaths in 1994 at the San Marino Grand Prix. The weekend led to another safety revolution in the sport, but it was Ilya De Angelis, who kicked it off. These days, safety is at the forefront of Formula One. The introduction of the halo protection system in fireproof suits helped to keep drivers safer than ever before. Romain Grosjean's fiery crash at the 2020 Bahrain Grand Prix was a reminder of how quickly things can turn for the worse. But after being trapped inside a flaming cockpit for almost half a minute, the fact that Grosjean survived shows just how far the sport has come. Did you know the name Ilio De Angelis before? For this video, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch you again at the next one.